Hello and welcome to another video. Today I thought we'd do something a little bit different and talk about some of my old photos from my time in the Navy. Specifically my time aboard the uh, John C. Stennis aircraft carrier. Um, I have some stories to share, I have some lessons learned, and this was really the beginning of my professional photography career. Um, so there's a lot of insight here and there's a lot of knowledge that I would like to pass on to you. A quick disclaimer here before we begin, all of these photos have been publicly released. There's nothing here that's classified at all. I was stationed on the John C. Stennis from 2016 to 2018, and I was a mass communication specialist. Uh, this meant my job was to take photos and video and just tell the story of the command I was at, the, the aircraft carrier. Most of my time was spent on the photography team in the media department, and that meant that my job every single day was to get at least five good images, five releasable images, telling the story of the ship and the crew and what was going on, our operations, uh, what we're up to, and just tell the story of what the ship is doing. So the first image I have for you here was taken fairly early on in my assignment to the photography department, so I wasn't super confident in my skills, to be honest with you. And this image was taken while the ship was pulling out of port. It was stationed in Bremerton, Washington at the time. And so to get out of this long, narrow channel, they would use a lot of tugboats to help the ship navigate out. So I had to show up hours before the ship actually pulled out of port to get, hop on this tugboat and document the entire process. So I was able to capture some close-ups of the tugboat interacting with the ship, and then it pulls off for me to get this wide shot. And this actually turned into quite a fun assignment because before the ship actually leaves the channel completely, the tugboat had to pull up behind the ship up to an area in the back called the stern dock for me to literally jump from the tugboat onto the ship. And it's not a very big gap or anything like that, but it was a pretty fun experience that very few people get to do. But I actually like how this image turned out. There are several leading lines here, both with the ship and with the wake of the tugboat, with the clouds up here, all leading into the um, the island or the tower of the ship here. So it kind of draws your eye across the ship and into the center here, uh, which is kind of nice. And you're met with some nice warm colors here from the sunrise. So it actually turned out to be a nice image. And one major lesson that I learned from this image in particular is the importance of a single image. And I remember feeling kind of bad that I hadn't come away with more good images. Really, this was the only one that was worth anything. But I remember my commanding officer telling me, no, we sent you out there for one image, and this is it. I nailed it. Uh, so I'll never forget that. One image can make your entire day worth it. If you go out and shoot street photography or whatever it is, if you come back with one good image, that's a good day. Because a lot of times that doesn't even happen. So sometimes one image can make it all worth it. Okay, so our next image here is of an MH-60 Seahawk helicopter. Uh, this is taken at night using long exposure light painting techniques. Um, this was a lot of fun to capture, and I think I mentioned in a previous video uh, a story about staying out a little too late, uh, and it was to get images like this. And I have a little bit more of that story for you today. Um, but before we get into that, I actually have the caption for this photo printed out. Uh, an MH-60S Seahawk helicopter assigned to Helicopter C Combat Squadron HSC-14 sits cocked and chained on the flight deck aboard the Nimitz-class Nimitz aircraft carrier USS John C. Stennis, CVN-74. John C. Stennis is underway conducting routine operations in the U.S. 3rd Fleet Area of Operations. And so all of that meaning that we were out conducting flight operations off the Pacific Coast. And this image here I believe was a 30 second exposure, if I remember correctly. And as you can see, the helicopter is backlit, completely backlit. So from where I was standing, the helicopter looked completely black. Um, so what I did though, is I, I framed up the shot and I started my exposure and then walked in front of the camera and painted light onto the helicopter with, I believe it was my cell phone actually, I used the flashlight on my cell phone to shine light onto the helicopter. And so this nice glowing light that you see coming around here is from the light reflecting off the helicopter and then being um, taken in by the camera. And these little light streaks here are more of a direct reflection of the flashlight I was shining onto the glass sections there. So there's two techniques for light painting, and one would be to face the light towards the camera and you'd get really bright streaks like this, or to face it towards your subject 
and just kind of paint this nice light on and the, the more you leave light in one place, the brighter that section will become. So this was an attempt to create some very dramatic and kind of moody uh, lighting on this helicopter here and the results were received quite well. HSC-14, the squadron that this helicopter belongs to, actually contacted the media department and wanted to know who took the photo and, and then other squadrons wanted photos of their aircraft in a similar fashion. So this kind of launched a new project for me and gave me a lot more work doing this long exposure stuff at night. And I believe it was on this particular night that myself and two other photographers were out pretty late. It was past midnight taking these shots and in order to get permission to be out on the flight deck you have to talk to uh, the flight deck control personnel um, so they need to manage exactly how many people are out on the flight deck all the time no matter what and there were three of us out there the two other photographers called it a night went back uh, but i wanted to stay out there and i stayed out and got this shot as well as several others um, and then when i finally called it a night at like three or four in the morning as i went back in the, the officer in charge of uh, the flight tech control didn't actually know that I was still out there. And it was kind of a funny moment because we both looked at each other and realized that if anybody else found out about this, we'd probably both be in trouble. Um, so he looked at me and said, I never saw you here, right? And I said, no, sir. <laughs> Um, and as it turns out, there weren't any flight operations going on at the time. There were people out uh, washing aircrafts, doing other maintenance things. So it wasn't a particularly dangerous environment. But anyway, that's just kind of a funny story of how this shot came about. If you are interested in the light painting techniques that I used for this photo or any of the other photos, please let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll do a tutorial video in the future on exactly how to do that move on to our next image. Uh, so here we have a uh, Super Hornet, I believe, F-18. Um, I have the caption printed out here as well. Sailors wash down an F-18E Super Hornet assigned to Strike Fighter Squadron VFA-14 on the flight deck aboard the Nimitz class aircraft carrier USS John C. Stennis, CVN-74. John C. Stennis is underway conducting routine operations in the US Third Fleet area of operations. So this may have been the same night, it may have been a different night, but what's happening here is we have a lot of crew members here that are washing down this F-18. And this is another long exposure, probably 20, 25, 30 seconds maybe. And they're all wearing headlamps. And so they're all clustered in these little areas looking at different parts of the aircraft or washing down different sections. And as you can see, these light streaks are them walking by. And that light is getting directly sucked into the camera. That's why it's so bright and vibrant in those areas. And then where the light is shining and reflecting off the aircraft is also brighter as well. And the goal with this image here was to create somewhat of a time lapse within a photograph. Um, and as you can see here, I lined up dead center, so you get some nice symmetry with the aircraft. And you can see all of these people doing their tasks, their maintenance, just working around in this sort of dance, really. And all of the light from their headlamps is just beaming straight into the camera, providing these nice light streaks all about this aircraft. And you can see the reflection of all these different colors, the colors that they're wearing, colors shining off of the aircraft. A lot of the surfaces are wet because they're washing parts of the aircraft, so you get nice reflections there as well. And it creates sort of this abstract or ethereal quality, even ghost-like quality, around this very concrete, real, solid structure, which is the aircraft. And so what I learned here was a lesson in creative integrity. Doing this sort of work for the military, there's very, very strict rules on how we can manipulate the photos. Really, it's very, very minimal editing. We don't Photoshop anything. So everything has to be done in camera. The most editing I would have done to any of these images would be to maybe just brighten them a little bit, bring it in line with what I experienced there with my naked eye as I observed this happening. So I took it kind of as a challenge there as well. How do I keep that realistic integrity intact, um, but at the same time making photos that are interesting, intriguing, and beautiful to look at? And so operating with a standard for minimal editing, I think, is a really good way to start your photography career because it's very, very easy early on to just overdo it, to be way too heavy handed with uh, contrast, textures, colors, saturation. It's really easy to go overboard and if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, 
uh, it can make your photos look very amateurish very quickly. Um, so this was a very interesting way for me to learn is to start with that minimal editing mindset um, and then look for ways to make photos as creative as possible, as intriguing, um, and as effective at telling a story as possible. So let's take a look at a couple more of these. Again, there's like that ethereal quality of these lights just floating around. Oh, here's an interesting image as well. They're shooting water at the nose of this aircraft here, and it almost looks like the cone that's created as a jet busts through the sound barrier. Um, pretty kind of neat, and it really speaks to uh, the geometry of these aircraft. And here I thought we'd wrap up with this last image. I'll read you the caption for this one again real quick. An FA-18C Hornet assigned to Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 323 of Carrier Air Wing 11 makes an arrested landing on the flight deck of the Nimitz class aircraft carrier USS John C. Stennis. Uh, 323 is conducting carrier qualifications aboard USS John C. Stennis. Stennis is underway, preparing for its next scheduled deployment. So this is an interesting image because you can see the jet here catching the cable as it's just made its landing. However, its thrusters are at full blast still. And the reason they do this is because as the jet comes down for a landing, if it misses this cable, it won't be able to slow down enough. It'll just fall off the front of the ship. So it has to be at full blast so that it has enough propulsion and enough thrust to take off in case it misses this cable. And as you can see, the end of the runway is literally right there. So the jet will come down, catch this cable, and still be at full blast as it comes to the stop. But then the pilot knows that he's caught, can throttle off, and then the engines will cycle down. But kind of interesting to see that moment captured when they're still at full blast and they've caught the cable. So I guess the lesson here would be to have a backup plan in case you miss the cable. <laughs> So in conclusion, uh, we talked about the importance of a single image. Sometimes a single image can make your whole day worth it, for sure. Uh, we talked about putting in the extra effort to go out there and learn a new skill. In this case, it was light painting with helicopters. Putting in that extra effort can really mean a lot, can really go a long way. And lastly, we talked about having truth in your photography. Having a standard of minimal editing so you don't enter the realm of digital art which there's nothing wrong with that, but there is a line between photography and digital art. Keeping that creative integrity intact, I think is very important. So anyway, I think that's where we'll call it for today. I hope that these lessons I've shared have helped you in some way, and taking a look at my photography in the Navy, really the start of my professional career, has inspired you to either get out and start taking photos or continue. If you like this type of video, please let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do some more. Thanks a bunch, guys.